Hi there. This is the first video in a series about Biome by Unfiltered Audio. It stands for Build Your Own Modular Effect. So it's an environment with over 40 effects um, that can be freely patched with almost 30 modulators. So the modulators range from everything to simple sine LFOs, uh, to sequencers, randomization, there's math operations and envelopes, everything. Um, the reason I want to make this video is I feel like there's been some great overview and review videos. And there's been some really interesting videos with uh, where people just use only biome to create a whole song from a simple source. Uh, but what I'd like to do is something in between. I do a lot of production and mixing of uh, independent bands and things like that. And I find that I'm using this plugin all the time for everything because the quality of the effects is really great. And I've been waiting for someone to really make this um, modular environment. There, there's a lot of plugins that have done it, but you could use it in a session and get something interesting happening really quickly. So starting off uh, getting into the interface, it's fully scalable, you can shrink it. Unfortunately it doesn't let you scale it left to right uh, at this time. They said they were going to add that, which would allow you to have more room um, horizontally to see the effects, or the cells as they're called. Um, <clears throat> There's some global options. There's a different skin that you can use if you want. You can turn on or off OpenGL. Um, you can enable the, a display, which shows these cool visualizations. I'm leaving that off because it's pretty unstable on my system. Um, I have an integrated GPU, and it, it doesn't seem to work very well with it on my Windows computer. I have an older Mac laptop that is fine, uh, but for now it's not really working that well for me. Um, there's a, these are global effects, there's input gain, there's a sample rate, which is really cool and we'll talk more about in a minute. Um, there's automatic gain compensation, which is also really cool, we'll get back to that. There's a dry wet between all the effects and off, and there's an output gain. There's also a ton of, of presets, uh, and you can scroll through them. There's some by Richard Devine that were very strange. Uh, as you can see, uh, things get really wacky with this plugin. A quick note, these parameters on the top, if you touch them and you go to parameter, in Reaper you have a last touched control and you can you can use that to bring up an envelope for automation all of these parameters in the cells if you do that you're gonna get something called the state change to fetch which is some sort of uh, way of keeping track of undo information or something like that so you can not actually just automate these directly what you need to do is use macros um, and I'll get into that in a minute Let's go over uh, using everything I just talked about. So I'm just gonna start with this loop. So you can just patch like this. Now we have a sign changing the cutoff filter. So what's interesting about the sample rate that I was talking about before, it doesn't just change the sampling rate of the output, it actually changes the way all of the effects are processing the incoming audio. It even makes the plugin use less CPU, as you can see down here. It pretty drastically changed its CPU usage because it's just using a lower sample rate. Where this is especially interesting is on time-based effects like delay or reverb. This reverb, deep reverb, has a ridiculous 360 second decay time all the way down to 100 milliseconds. And if I stop it with audio in the buffer and move the sample rate, 
you can hear you get this really cool pitch effect and that's automatable or uh anything <laughs> you can do a lot with it you can automate it or you can uh, attach it to modulators um so going back to the macros if i wiggle this knob i can bring that up as my last touched envelope and just to stop this long reverb sound because the time is so long they give you a flush control uh, which allows you to just kill it so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to take that macro and i'm just going to draw a quick one line of automation and what's so great about the macro system is you can patch it in real time because of that you can have one line of automation in your daw doing a ton of different stuff so i'll start i'll patch that to the cutoff of the filter and i'm also going to patch it to the sample rate but i'm going to reduce that so that it's pushing it down and uh, let's listen to the, how that sounds should go closer to the so you can see it quickly goes from being a, a static effect to like a riser almost an instrument So that's super cool. Now going back to another thing that I said I would talk about, the automatic gain compensation. Usually with automatic gain compensation, uh, some plugins try to do that. I've seen it in a lot of compressors and it's just, they're trying to analyze the RMS or overall value of the input signal and like gently match the output to be the same level. This is not gentle. This is rapid. It's really odd. and. Uh, what it does is like you can hear we have this really long reverb but it's just like forcing the sound of the reverberated audio to be rhythmic in the way that the input signal is if i mute the plug and you can hear and that's automatable too so yeah what i'm what i'm trying to show here is just how well like all the effects obviously are really cool that reverb's great the filter's cool everything's laid out in this way that just makes you want to use this as an instrument and that's why i find this really useful for mixing and production because i feel like every song needs to have something special and e even if it doesn't make sense to have 160 second reverb in your song there's going to be something in here like whether it's just a chorus that you're doing something interesting and modular with, whether it's something weird like the granulator or like a gl the glitch, uh, there's a glitch delay. Um, this is a really good plugin, and I don't think people should overlook it who are just doing kind of mixing and production. Um, so yeah, uh, the next video is going to be about the input follower and spectral follower which allows you to take incoming audio either from the track that the effects on that biomes on or from an external source um, that's one of the things that this plugin does super well that i've been waiting i've been waiting so long for someone to make a like a, a well laid out ergonomic modular effect that allowed you to easily take signal from other tracks as a side chain and change things um, so that it, it opens up a world of possibilities that are really useful for any type of, like pretty much any type of music or production, this can be useful in, unless it's like classical where they want it to be <laughs> exactly what's there. I think you can use this, you can use this for anything. So yeah, it's a great plugin and, um, I'm excited to show some more things it can do. Thanks for watching.